Running a Spring Boot up using Java 11, Docker and the Raspberry Pi has never been easier and in this video I show you the exact steps on how to do this. If you are new here, my name is Alex and I make videos on various tools and frameworks, mostly focusing on Kotlin and Spring. For this tutorial we will go with a plain Spring Boot web application that we need to create first. The best place for getting started with Spring is the Spring Initializer, which you can find at start.spring.io. I will stay in the terminal for this whole video so I don't have to switch between multiple windows and as you see in a bit there's even no need to leave the terminal. Not even for the Spring Initializer. You can use the Spring Initializer from your favorite browser, your favorite IDE or you can just talk to it directly using HTTP. I'm using HTTP here and when connecting to start.spring.io we see something like this. This response contains various details on how to create a new project, the information that we need to provide and the dependencies that we can specify. So we will use that to create a project here and to not bore you with all the details, let's just quickly create this. So as you can see, we want to create a project that's compressed in the tar archive. It's going to be a graded project using the Kotlin programming language. We are running on Java 11 and we'll use the web dependency. Everything else should be pretty self-explanatory. So let's unpack this and look into it. If we now peek into the newly created project, you should see the familiar structure and all of the default files and folders. So let's add a simple controller so we can talk to the application from the outside. So let's run the application to verify that everything is working as expected. I'm using the Gradle wrapper that's provided here and execute the boot run task. So that looks good. As you can see the application started in a bit more than a second. And now let's talk to the application directly. So as you can see, this works as planned. We can invoke the controller and get the Pong message back. So that wraps up the application at this point. We first need to create a Docker file, which describes the steps required to build our final image. So let's stop the application here. Let's go on with the Docker file. We are building off of the ARM32 v7 Java 11 image which provides the needed Java version. Then we create a new group called Spring and add a user of the same name to it. So we can tell Docker to execute the application as that user. Now we need to add our application which is stored in the build libs folder for greater base projects or in the target folder if you are using Maven. We copy the archive and tell Docker to execute the application using Java. With that in place, we need to build the application otherwise the jar wouldn't exist yet. Now for the fun part. I'm using Docker on my Mac, so usually I can only create images for the same architecture I'm using. But with the new experimental flag, I can even compile images for another platform which is needed to build the image for the Raspberry Pi. To enable experimental features, we need to set an environment variable. This gives us access to the build x command and now we can build the image like so. So fast forward, the image has been created and you will find it in your local registry. So it's time to get this shipped to the Raspberry. For this tutorial, I'm using a Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus and I've also tested it with a Model 4. And these Raspberries are running the Raspberry OS. So let's connect to the new Raspberry, which lives here. You can see that this is a fresh installation of the Raspberry Pi OS. We first need to install Docker before we can even continue. I'm using the direct approach by executing their install script with root permissions, but you should always double check these scripts before running them, especially with the root permissions in place. So 
So in order to use Docker as a non-root user, we do as suggested and add our user to the Docker group. That's it. If I now call Docker version, we see there are a few information, but also there's this permission denied error. This is because my new group membership has not been reflected yet. Quickly logging out and back in solves this. So you can see that everything's working now and we can proceed. Since we have built the image on the Mac, I have to now somehow move it over to the Raspberry. I could set up a registry, but uploading the image via SCP is much faster, so we do that. Back on the Mac, I store the image on the disk. I can now check that the image has been exported. So the next step is to upload it to the Raspberry. We have everything in place now to run the application, so let's log back into the Raspberry. And we can see the image has been uploaded, so now we need to import it locally again. Finally, we can do a quick check to see if the image has properly been imported. And there it is. So now let's run it. This now starts the container exposing port 8080 to port 8080 on the outside using our image. But we can see that now the application has been started. So let's do a final check. And it works. We now have a Spring Boot application running on Java 11 in Docker on the Raspberry Pi. This wraps up this tutorial. If you like more of this content, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want me to cover other topics in the future, please leave a comment. You can also find a written article of this video on my website linked in the description below. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon.